Hi, this is Mike Peterson from Challenge Island, Oakland County East, back with our Steamtastic Friday. We're in the middle of our candy series, which is one of my favorite topics here at Challenge Island. And today we're going to talk about the art of candy. So candy, of course, is beautiful in itself. If you've ever seen a really cool piece of chocolate or a chocolate that's been molded into the shape of a bunny or an animal or something like that, that counts as art, of course. But we're, today we're going to take a look at some artists who have been inspired by candy to create some really cool artwork. So maybe this will give you some ideas so you can try creating your own artwork after you see some of what we'll show you today. So let me just show you five different artists real quick. Our first artist is Daryl Gordner. She's from California. So she creates what we call hyper-realistic paintings. So believe it or not, this picture of a lollipop is actually a painting. And it's a pretty big painting too. It's actually about four feet tall by three feet wide. And it's also kind of expensive. So her art is very popular. It's in a lot of art galleries throughout California. And for example, this one sells for about $14,000. So candy art can be pretty profitable. All right, let's take a look at another one. Here's another artist called Peter Anton. He's based on the Eastern part of the United States in Connecticut. So he does 3D art. So even though my picture looks like a flat box of candy, this is actually a big 3D artificial box of candy. And he uses different kinds of materials like aluminum, foil, different kinds of polymers and plastics to make again, a hyper-realistic or very realistic looking box of candy. So he displays this in different art galleries and his is kind of expensive too. So it cost about $36,000 to get your own box of candy that looks like this. So some other artists have taken some different approaches. So here's an artist, Robin Blair. She's from New York City. So she just really likes candy. She had candy all over her house and then got an idea one day, why don't I start making art out of this? So, so the way she does her art is she makes a plastic box. So she takes some plexiglass, some of that, that clear plastic uh, glass and makes a box out of it. So each box is about an inch and a half thick. So it's about this thick that would stick out of your wall. And then she fills it up with fun kinds of candy and then put some kind of words on it. For example, this one says, in case of emergency, break glass. So, so if you were hungry for some candy, all you'd have to do is go to the art on your wall, get that glass out, and you could have all the candy you wanted. So, and she's more than happy to sell, sell that to you as well for about $1,500. So, so let me show you a couple more ideas. This one would be a little bit messy to try at your house, but this was pretty cool, I thought. This is Eric Retinen, who's originally from Finland, but he creates these art installations all over the world. So what he does, his art doesn't last very long, but he gets some cotton candy machines and actually makes cotton candy and then hangs it on a big frame inside an art museum. So it only lasts for about a few hours or so, but when people come to visit the art museum, if they get there first, it'll look like a big wall of cotton candy. And then as the cotton candy starts to kind of melt and fall back apart again, it just turns back into the frame again. So this is what we call temporary art. So it doesn't last very long. So, so if you hear of Eric coming to your town to put together some art, you better get there quick so you can take a look at it before it melts away. And one other one I wanted to show you too, just to give you one more idea. This one may be a little bit easier. This artist is Felix Gonzalez Torres. So he put together this art installation. It's called Untitled, which means it doesn't really have a name. He did this at the Art Institute of Chicago, and this has been around for years actually. So what he did is he had a friend of his that weighed about 175 pounds. So he thought it would be fun to make an art installation where he just made a huge pile of candy that actually weighs 175 pounds. So if you go visit this art installation, you would see this big pile of candy in the corner and wonder, hmm, can I eat that or not? Believe it or not, check the signs before you go, but it is okay to eat this candy. So he actually encourages the people who come visit to come eat his candy. So in fact, they've got a company all lined up with spare candy. So about twice a week, if the museum's really busy, they have to put in about 45 pounds of candy back into the sculpture to get it back to the 175 pounds. So it's still the same size. So this is a fun kind of art called, we could call this interactive art, where you actually get to do stuff with it. You don't have to just look at it. So always be sure to check the signs to make sure it's okay to touch it. But if you could go see this one in Chicago, this one's okay to touch. This would be a fun one. All right, so with that, those are just a few of ideas of how you can make art out of candy. So why don't you try that at home? See if you can maybe come up with a fun drawing of candy or just take a pile of candy and put it somewhere and take a cool picture of it. There's all kinds of ways to get creative with art, especially when it comes to candy. All right, with that, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.